According to relevant data, a high-speed train traveling at a speed of 250 km per hour consumes approximately 4,800 kilowatt hours of electricity per hour. A high-speed train traveling at a speed of 350 km per hour consumes 9,600 kilowatt hours of electricity per hour. This amount of electricity can keep some energy-saving air conditioners running for 30 years. Where does such a large power consumption come from? How is it different from ordinary household electricity? In fact, the electricity used by high-speed railways and ordinary residents is provided by the public grid. The only difference is that the electricity used by ordinary residents is configured and delivered by the local power supply company. High Speed Rail is a special customer of the power supply company, and the electricity consumption standards are naturally different from ordinary residents. The electricity used by High Speed Railways is converted through traction substations under the control of the railway department and then supplied through the catenary. Under normal circumstances, the traction power supply system of high-speed rail EMUs mainly includes power transmission links such as traction substations, contact grids, and return circuits. There is a big gap between the electricity consumption of high-speed rail and that of ordinary residents. On the one hand, it is reflected in the voltage. Household voltage is usually 220V, but the voltage of high-speed rail is specific and will not be displayed in the power supply sequence of the grid. On the other hand, the AC power in the household power grid is three-phase, while in China's high-speed railways, single-phase AC power of 50 Hz, 25 or 27.5 kV is generally used. The high-speed rail itself does not have a power generation device. All electricity can only be provided through the electric traction power supply system along the railway, and power supply can be completed through the process of power transformation and distribution. The power transformation link refers to converting the 220 kV voltage transmitted from the power plant into 27.5 kV through the transformer. Only in this way can it be supplied to the EMU. The power distribution link in the power system can directly connect with users and distribute electric energy. Under normal circumstances, there will be a catenary placed above the track of the high-speed train. When the high-speed train is running at high speed, it receives power through the pantograph on the roof. It is worth noting that during this process, the pantograph and the contact network of the EMU must use a, a Z-shaped contact method to realize power supply, so as to reduce the loss caused by friction and extend the service life of the power equipment. After the current enters the train through the contact network, it needs to be transferred in the high-voltage equipment box and traction transformer in the train to form five specific constant currents for use by different equipment on the train. Two of the power sources are related to the travel comfort of passengers. One is the single-phase AC 400V current, which is required for the ventilation device, temperature adjustment and hot water in the tram. The other is the common AC 220V current, which mainly supports the socket power supply on the EMU seat and can be used by passengers to charge. In addition, everyone will find that the lights have not changed in any way while the train is running, which requires DC 100V current support. Taking the Fuxing EMU as an example, diversified lighting control modes are currently applied. The lights in the carriages and corridors will automatically adjust as the external environment changes. Why is the power supply of EMUs so complicated? In fact, this is closely related to its power supply method and power supply difficulty. 
the application of alternating current in high-speed rail can realize long-distance transmission of electric energy and reduce electric energy loss. Due to the extremely high speed of the train, the stay time of the pantograph and the catenary at each contact point is very short, so a higher voltage level is required to achieve normal supply of high-speed rail power. China has made clear regulations on the power supply voltage of high-speed rail. The rated transmission voltage of a low-speed railway with a speed of 160 km per hour is 27.5 kV. Taking into account the influence of the environment and various special factors, the voltage load of the pantograph of the EMU is between 20 kV and 29 kV. High-speed railways with a speed of 350 km per hour also follow this principle. However, there is a time limit. The maximum voltage allowed to last for a long time is 27.5 kV, and the 29 kV current can only last for 5 minutes at most. In addition, the reasonable design range of traction substations built along high-speed rail lines is generally around 60 km to 70 km. It can not only ensure the smooth operation of the vehicle, but also reduce the consumption of electric energy. From a practical perspective, there are two main charging methods for high-speed rail, contact charging and wireless charging. Contact charging means that the high-speed rail is directly connected to the power supply equipment through a contact device to transmit electric energy to the high-speed rail. This charging method is usually performed when the high-speed train enters the station or stops. When the high-speed train enters the station or stops, the contact device will be connected to the contact head of the power supply equipment, and the electric energy will be transmitted to the battery of the high-speed train through current transmission for use when the high-speed train is running. This charging method is more efficient and can charge high-speed rail quickly. Wireless charging means that high-speed rail transmits electric energy to high-speed rail through wireless charging technology. This charging method is more convenient than contact charging and can be charged while the high-speed train is traveling without stopping. Wireless charging technology mainly includes two methods electromagnetic induction charging and electromagnetic radiation charging. Electromagnetic induction charging uses the principle of electromagnetic induction to transmit electrical energy to the high-speed rail. An induction coil is installed on the bottom or side of the high-speed rail. When the high-speed train passes the charging equipment, the induction coil will sense the electromagnetic field and transmit the electric energy to the high-speed train's battery. Electromagnetic radiation charging transmits electrical energy to high-speed rail through electromagnetic waves. A receiver is installed on the bottom or side of the high-speed rail. When the high-speed rail passes the charging equipment, the receiver will receive electromagnetic waves and convert the electrical energy into current for use by the high-speed rail. However, whether it is contact charging or wireless charging, high-speed rail charging equipment is usually installed at specific locations on high-speed rail lines, such as stations, parking lots, etc. This ensures that the high-speed rail can be charged in time during travel and ensures its normal operation. Generally speaking, there are mainly two charging methods for high-speed rail. The first type is contact charging, and the second type is wireless charging. Contact charging is performed when the high-speed train enters the station or stops, and the electric energy is transmitted to the high-speed train through the connection between the contact device and the power supply equipment. Wireless charging transmits electric energy to the high-speed train through electromagnetic induction or electromagnetic radiation, and can be charged while the high-speed train is traveling. 
The application of these charging methods ensures the normal operation of high-speed rail and provides passengers with a fast, efficient and comfortable travel experience. What should passengers do if there is a power outage during the high-speed rail operation? In fact, high-speed rail does not always have continuous power supply during operation. Sometimes it often passes through a section without power, which is about 100 m away. At this time, the train has no electricity, but it can pass directly by relying on inertia, and passengers have almost no feeling. The problem that people are concerned about is sudden power outage during the operation of high-speed rail. It is possible to happen, but don't panic. High-speed rail designers have already prepared for rainy days and have given good solutions. First of all, large capacity batteries are installed on the top of high-speed trains. Through DC inverters, they can keep the high-speed train running for a period of time. Secondly, if the battery is exhausted, the command system on the high-speed train will ask for help from the nearest traction substation along the route. Then, the high-speed rail EMU will be dragged to the station it needs to reach through the internal combustion engine power locomotive. Of course, this possibility is very small. In recent years, due to the influence of external environmental factors such as bad weather, there have been power outages due to high-speed rail catenary failures. The most obvious feeling is that the temperature inside the train continues to rise. When encountering this situation, as an ordinary traveler, you must not panic. First of all, you should calm down, stay calm, do not cause unnecessary disturbances, do not try to break the car windows, and wait quietly for rescue. Secondly, you must replenish water in time. After a power outage, a sweltering environment will form inside the train compartment, which may cause dehydration of the human body. Finally, passengers are required to sit quietly in their seats and wait for power restoration or rescue. Today, China's high-speed rail technology has achieved independent design and is at the forefront of the world. At present, China's high-speed railways need to effectively ensure power transmission, reduce the occurrence of failures, ensure the safety of passengers, and continue to play an important role in China's economic development. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.